So yeah, quick recap. Last time we left off, Joseph got bitten because Jin, who was driving our truck, decided to help the police station. And the reason why we didn't want to help the police station is because they are playing a broadcast over a loudspeaker that they are not going to help anyone and that they're going to kill anyone who tries to come near them, basically. Because we went to the supermarket, got a bunch of groceries, and now we are... Uh, now we're fucked. We have to go save her. So, we're going to go to the sewers. And we're going to kill some fucking guys. Also, if I sound congested, uh, congested, it's because I am. Like, if I sound sick. Or just, like, a little bit nasally. I've been having, like, sinus issues and shit. Because it's winter. Okay, this is a thing that has been annoying me when I've been editing videos as well. I can hear my mouse tapping the base of my microphone so it sounds like there's little pops from time to time so I need to I need to go out and buy like a boom arm from my microphone just so I stop like hitting it and making a bunch of fucking noise like I like my current microphone it's pretty good it's it's good quality and if it ever dies it's really cheap to replace so like I'm winning also um I guess like yesterday morning, because it is technically Wednesday, what, Tuesday now? I went and I bought a skate, uh, a skateboard so I can be a cool skater guy. Have I broke my wrist yet? I haven't fucking rode it yet. Because like, as soon as I got home, I like ate food and then went to bed. Yeah, we get to go to the police station. Here it is, boys and girls. And others. I'm a police officer. Will you help me? Absolutely. You want to know? You want to know how you make bullets? You use bleach to make bullets. I don't. I'm just as confused as you are. I have not actually played Dying Light. I'm very curious about playing it. Because if it's anything like this game, I'd probably enjoy it. Or rather, if the game plays anything like this game. Because I know it's very similar to, like, the city. In a lot of ways. But with, like, more freedom of movement. Which sounds really interesting to me. Yo, we got any truers in chat? It's actually cut off. I don't know if they're saying bad or bastards. I don't know why, like, some of these... Punks look like suburban dads. Especially because they have like fucking bubble jackets. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Most, like most dev teams will reuse assets from games, from game to game. Because it just doesn't make sense to like have a thousand different versions of Let what is essentially the same filing cabinet or desk or computer model you know it's just like it, it'd just be a waste of budget even even though gamers are like oh my god you copy assets you copy paste copy paste and it's like dude do you know how much fucking effort actually goes into fucking making half of this shit especially to the quality that's like required of triple a games like this game is not the best looking, and I'll admit, even even when it like first came out, it was probably like middle ground. Like it wasn't like it was fucking Crisis 2 or anything, but it was still like considerably high fidelity for the time. Yeah, I know. I heard about that. It's actually absurd. And people with that game complain about a lack of content. And I would also complain about lack of content as well because like come on like get your fucking head out your ass do what any reasonable studio does and you know like you can make custom assets right it's not to say that you can't make custom assets for specific levels but re like remaking absolutely everything every time is just stupid it's like the really old boomer attitude I know I hark on about boomers a lot. It's like the boomer attitude of like 
my work is better because I make it harder for myself. Do because I struggled more making this, that means that what I've done has more value. When it's like, no, you're just being dumb. Hard work will, will net you far less progress and prestige than if you actually use your brain to think about a problem first. If you actually work out ways that you could do it better next time, if you're always learning. You know, I could I could be doing it better, or I could be doing it doing it smarter, but I'm I'm not going to because of like stubborn pride. What the hell is wrong with you? Get out! You two, go. I just, I just tried to help. I tried. It's all right, love. We're getting you out of here. Team, right? We stick together. That's exactly why she shouldn't come with us. We all could have died. She fucking lied to us. I'm not saying leave her here. Give her to the nun. Then we could head to the hotel. She made a mistake. She was trying to do the right thing. Let's just take the supplies back to the resort and get her off the island. She doesn't belong here anyway. I'll go look for the goddamn car. And what if she make another mistake? I don't think she'll be making that one again. So yeah, that was a cutscene. What's her? Oh my god. Oh my god. I know what I know what fatal is. Cause that that's a fucking module and a half. Sure. If anyone's wondering what I'm referring to, basically my friend Mal here in chat is talking about anal circumference, which is a reference to this very, very fucking weird tabletop RPG, and it's really hard to explain other than just like, it's the most degenerate shit you'll ever read, basically. Like most of the RNG encounters that you will roll for if you're GMing, are like weirdly sexual you will find a girl or 99 percent of the time it'll be a woman naked or about to be sacrificed or in a sexually compromising position and it's it's fucked you showed a lot of courage we thank you the, the even worst part about it is that it can even include children which is fucked. Yeah, it's 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 just degenerate shit. It's borderline pedophilia. And I don't like it. And I wish it wasn't a thing, but it is. I don't know who actually wrote it. I just know it's a meme. Especially on TG. I actually don't know what I'm... Like, I know I'm looking for a file, but I don't know what it actually looks like. Like, that, that right there could have been it, but it's not. I love directionless quests. I tell you to just find a thing in a sea of things without ever being specific about it. I got Tim's files. Okay, time to leave. Oh, I have to hold... I have to download the diet. I'm hacking the mainframe. I have to do it again. This is exciting gameplay. This is the gameplay I remember. What? What am I supposed to be doing? I guess I finished it? I'm downloading data for what purpose? Well, whatever. I guess I gotta... Leave? Maybe there's something in Question there. mark? Good. I need a gun to take from him. I'll give you... Okay. You need a gun. Uh, he needs specifically his neighbor's gun. I can't just give him one of my guns, which I have plenty of. I have to go find him a specific gun. At least it's close by. Drag, I am stronger. I will take it no, no longer. 
Oh, she is stronger. Not always lost. But you... I'll do my best. So this is another really long cutscene that I'm also going to paraphrase. Basically, the gang gets to the hotel and is looking for the guy on the radio, but they can't find him. And then all of a sudden, bang, he's there. They tell him that he is a colonel with the BDF or uh, some shit. And then they basically ask him, okay, well, where the fuck are you? And then he says, oh, I'm just at the prison. You got to find this guy called Moen in the jungle and he'll be able to get you here. And then everyone's like, wait, what the fuck? How do we know when you're not just a prisoner? And then he's just like, oh, I wouldn't be able to do this if I was in a cell. And I'm like, okay, it seems legit. I don't have Riptide because I never bought it when it was, uh, when it came out. Um, I've been considering buying it actually because I did play through this a lot, but I haven't actually, like, I don't know a lot about, um, I don't know a lot about Riptide comparatively to this game. Also, fuck these crates. Haha, <laughs> epic, epic music reference. Travel to the jungle. Before we do this, I need to go visit my favorite Eastern European. How many diamonds does she have? She has as many as you need. This is the part of the game that I know arguably the least amount of, uh, the least about. Also, speaking of Halo 3, I'm, uh, I'm playing through it with my mate on Legendary, and it's a fun time. The only thing that sucks is that uh, we keep disconnecting because MCC is MCC, but I don't know if it would happen over LAN, but it is annoying. Getting like 20 minutes into a mission and then just disconnecting, especially, all, uh, especially on Legendary. Course. Hey, we got more side quests though. I'll try. Jesus. Wow, how nice. Jesus, you look like shit. Like, thanks. Really boosting the self esteem here, buddy. A lot of villages were badly hurt the last when you bandaged. Let's do this. Oh, I need specific bandages. I absolutely hate when games do that. Like, you need to get this mundane item, but you can only get this mundane item from this specific place. It's like, no, fuck you. I've been hoarding bandages my whole life. I want to give them to you. I'll see what I can do. I'll do my best. Okay, so this should be like all the quests for now from this village. Thank you. I'll take this. No! Nearest and local. Yes. God fucking damn it. <laughs> I took the axe, but my inventory's full, so I just dropped it in the house that I can't actually get in. It was a shitty axe, though, so. Whatever. Thanks for all your help. Okay, that was easy. I mean, I'm all, I'm almost always on the side of creators versus the platforms they create on. As long as, like, they're not making heinous content. Because it's like, okay, like, I'm a creator who streams on, uh, on, on a large corporation's website. I use a platform owned by a large company. On one hand, it's like, yeah, it would be extremely shit to get banned for doing half an hour of something that seemed really mundane. It's really stupid. Although, like, in today's context, it does seem way worse or more egregious because, like, we're used to IRL streaming being a legitimate thing. Back then, it was like... Dude, you're not streaming games? What the fuck? Bro, I can't believe you're not sh you're not streaming games. Well, of course you're gonna get banned. F 
fuck did you expect? Like, now it's sort of just better for everyone. Because a lot of people can just do... They can create the content they want to without having to worry about Twitch potentially just hitting them in the dick over the stupidest things. Like, a lot of... I'd say a lot of the TOS drama that started is exactly that. It's just purely drama. Just as a side note, uh, while I'm editing this, I wanted to sort of make my statement more clear about uh, TOS drama being drama. I'm also talking about the people on Twitter who like to sort of like rules lawyer TOS whenever someone they don't particularly like does something that is potentially TOS but isn't necessarily. I'm more so referring to that rather than people who actually do break TOS and do get held accountable for it. If so, that's really silly. Like, I understand DMCAing someone over or potentially banning them if they're running, like, straight up just, like, a radio show where all they do is just broadcast music. All they do is just broadcast music and the main focus of the channel is music they don't have the rights to. I know DJs are a thing on Twitch, but, like, sampling is not the same as, like, okay, here's the next songs that we're playing, and then you just play songs, and then you're like, okay, here's the next songs that we're playing, and then you just play songs. Where DJing is, like, I'll sound pretentious in saying this, but, like, DJing is in itself an art form. A good DJ is exactly that. You won't really find a good replacement for one. If they, if they do know their shit, you know? If there's no means for you to actually pay for the music like you can get licenses but a lot of them for music is incredibly expensive because record companies are record companies and they want to get the most they want to squeeze the most money out of literally everything they can which is the worst i fucking hate record companies but yeah it's really hard to actually get a means to play the music that you want like if i if i wanted to buy or if i wanted to play like my whole Spotify library on Twitch legally and without getting demonetized, then it would cost me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. If it was a dollar to play any song I wanted, um, as many times as I like, it would be at least like four or five grand because of how big my music library is. And Amazon being Amazon, they aren't going to stick up for creators. As much as people like to think uh, Twitch as a company is a noble pursuit, they're much, they're much more likely to side with big business because they are big business than they are to side with literally any of their creators unless those creators are making them thousands of dollars. And, and I'm of the opinion that with music in particular, especially in like YouTube content, that drives people to listen to a song way more. If it's like a good song, that's used well in a video, people are way more fucking likely to start listening to that song. Like, I guess with like, something like, I don't know, Tatsuro Yamashita, it was either them or Iron Pineapple, and they were using like Tatsuro's music in their in their videos. And, and I was listening to like, Right On Time, for example. I saw lots of comments that were like, oh, here from X's video. People are clearly going to these uh, videos because they like enjoy the music. And it's not like these creators like are, are putting the music in because like, oh yeah, I want to make money off other people's music. And I think this is very different to like using people's art without permission to like draw an art because people are far less likely to see a drawing that they saw in a video and be like, ooh, who drew that? Like, people are way more receptive to music than anything else, I've found. Same thing for games, and same things for TV shows. TV shows are just way more proper in that they, um, they actually license it, because they legally have to. I do think artists should get paid for their music, and I think there's, I think there's no need to be as stringent with it as, piss as Twitch currently is. I'm in. I'm making a whole zero dollars from this and YouTube. But I do it because I enjoy it. I don't do it because I want to be all famous with money. I would be completely content doing this as a side 
and 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 sit on like a hundred viewers most 50 to 100 viewers where chat's somewhat consistent and i can play the game then deal with like 1000 to 2000 viewers a stream because at that point it's like a bell curve it's a bell curve of interaction where the most is directly in the middle so the less you have the less interaction you get the more you have the more interaction until a certain point and then it just drops off because there's just too many people to respond to and i find i find the response part the most enjoyable because i just want to i just i just want to vibe out and play video games and potentially talk to neat uh neat people at the same time i don't think streaming needs to be such a rat race or as much of a rat race as some people choose it to be or make it out to be but you can be competitive and, and if you are competitive you can be successful if you actually like look at how algorithms work and other aspects you know you capitalize on like trends and you just you have good social media presence like you know how to not game social media but you know how to how to use it you can be very very successful in that regard that's not the kind of streamer I want to be. I don't think it's bad if people want to be like that because that's still an admirable goal. I've met streamers who who are extremely good at like gaming social media and they know how to do the PR dance, but I prefer not to do that. I don't know, like I'd, I'd be fine being chill with like PR people, like especially in Australia. Like, the representatives for some companies are fairly, fairly nice. The haha -ha girl gamers thing, I don't see the appeal either. But then again, like, I don't want to say I'm, I'm a ladies guy and I'm just like drowning in the puss. But like, I think a lot of it's loneliness, you know. They want to see an idealized version of something they have no real experience with, if that makes any sense at all. And, and, and it's okay if you're a guy and you don't have experience with women, but it's definitely a thing of like, I don't know much about girls, right? And people say, you know, um, oh yeah, you know, like just be yourself, um, find people who are interested in the same things as you. Oh, oh wait, you aren't actually talking about girl gamers, but I'll finish my, I'll finish my tangent. I'm gonna get... Sure. I think the reason why a lot of it appeals to, like, particularly the ones who lean in on being, like, the kooky, oh, yeah, like, I just love gaming and, like, 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 e-girls, the, the, the people who lean into it. I think a lot of that is, um, the idealization of a certain archetype of person. They more so enjoy the idea of a girl who likes games versus girls who like games if that makes any sense at all they much prefer the idea of like oh you know it's a girl who likes games and she could be into me you know she might be into me you know she she likes games and i also like games so maybe maybe you know she might be into me because I'm like I'm like a cool guy. I'm like a normal guy, and I think a lot of it just comes from a, a a lack of emotional maturity, or just a lack of experience. There is more criteria for a good partner than just likes the things that I like. Because when I think about what I look for or what I would look for in a partner, it's not just Mmm, yes. Someone who plays games, who likes films and music. I would prefer someone who, like, if I, I would like someone who has similar tastes. Because having, having, like, having no compatibility is awful. But I would like people who have their own interests. Rather than just being a mirror of myself. It's just, it's just this naivety that... It's because a girl likes games and I also like games, therefore she will probably like me in a romantic way. It's just, it's just not true. It's setting yourself up for disappointment. It's setting yourself up to be let down 
And it's how you get into, like, nice guy syndrome and how you get into, like, being an orbiter and all of that sort of shit, where, like, they do things for people because they think that's how relationships work. They think, ah, uh, yes, if I, if I just help her with things, or if I do things for her, then she will... And because I find that to be a valuable trait, you know, people helping me out, I think that would be an ideal trait that someone else would find attractive. And then it'll, it also leans in further when like, okay, they do it to a previous relationship or not even a previous relationship, like a friendship that they had. They're like, okay, they do lots of things for someone and then they don't get anywhere. They get friend zoned, which is a stupid term, by the way. I fucking hate the term friend zoned. Not just because of the implication, but because I think it's it's a really dumb thing to not quantify, but complain about. Like people get stuck in the friend zone. They try and they try and just like I I'll do something for them, and because of this, they'll be more appreciative. They'll try and reciprocate or whatever, and then they do that, and then they get rejected. And instead of examining why what they were doing or why that sort of behavior might not necessarily make them seem attractive or make the person want to be with them because there's no like guaranteed way to get people and anyone who says there is, is 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 full of shit they look at that and instead of saying hmm i might have done something wrong here they double down and think they didn't do enough so they get into this cycle where like okay i didn't do enough here so i'm gonna try and do more next time and then when they do more next time the the same result happens and then they either double down, down and try it for a third time, or they fall into the attitude that, oh, nothing is ever enough for women. Nothing, not like nothing I ever do is good enough. And they get really toxic. And then that's how you get things like incels, uh, which is, again, a term that sort of lost all its meaning in how people just use it willy nilly. Despite it having a very specific meaning, that's how you get like nice guys. And how this sort of relates to girl gamers is that these kinds of people, gravitate towards it and and there's two choices to consider and it's either like okay well you go into it expecting nothing right you just have no expectations because you really should when you meet someone or you start getting to know someone you should really have zero expectations because having expectations uh when you first meet someone is absolutely nuts it's like you've just met this person you know nothing about them so they had this expectation that like, okay, this might go somewhere. But that thought, the thought itself isn't unhealthy unless it's the one you start with. Those should be things you start considering when, you know, you're hanging out with them and you're being flirtatious, they're being flirtatious, you're talking to each other, you're having a good time, you genuinely feel attracted to them. And like, if they seem to be reciprocating the feelings and like, that's great. And if they are, then just, ask them on a date like if you've been if you've been hanging out like one-on-one -on -one and it's been going well and you've been enjoying each other's company fuck it just ask them on a date what's the worst that's gonna happen you're gonna get friend zoned but what is the friend zone the friend zone is just like you know oh you're a great person to be around but i'm not particularly romantically interested and for some people that's like a game over if that's a game over for you you need to really re-examine your priorities or re-examine the reasons why you talk to women or meet women at all. Because if you struggle being friends with women, then you're going to struggle with being in a relationship with women. I think the like best example I have of this is like, I went to a streaming event and I met this girl 